So welcome. I'm so happy that we have Ankita here today to share with us all about prebiotics, postbiotics, and probiotics, and the microbiome. And uh, Ankita is a board-certified health coach. And we are very fortunate to have her today as she shares about this such an important area because a key to our health in every way is our gut. And this is a real inside look, as you can see, that beautiful picture inside our gut. So thank you for sharing with us, Antrita. I so appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Dr. Karen, and welcome, everybody. So we we talk all about how we are supposed to balance our um, insulin levels, eat healthy, uh, keep our gut healthy, keep our mind and our body, everything in sync with our gut. So today's topic is going to be talking a little bit about what each one of these terms stand for and how you can have access to a, pre, a good quality prebiotic or a probiotic or even a postbiotic. It's a, it's a fairly new term that has come into our health industry and how all of those three um, can actually help your microbiome flourish. Right. And today in today's pre presentation, we will talk about your oral microbiome, um, your skin microbiome. So we're going to we're going to try and talk about how overall you can take care of yourself. Right. So your body is actually full of bacteria, viruses and fungi. Now, all of these, the, how you know how you look at this beautiful picture, it's all these tiny microbes collectively called your microbiome, right? And where do they exist? They mainly reside inside your intestine, your mouth, and your skin. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk about all those three major focus areas today, right? And they're with you since you are born. And that's a good thing that we have all of these microbes sitting with you, right? And what, how do you what how do you actually well let's let me let me go to the next slide and we'll talk about what is the microbiome right so let's let's think about your microbiome as collectively as a bowl full of bacteria viruses and fungi right now maintaining your nutritional status your immunity and the behavior of your brain are all related to a healthy balance of all these microbiome. So when you think about your microbiome, you're thinking about, is your skin glowing? Are you feeling calm? Is stress at the bottom, right? So we're talking about all of those. Let's move on to what we would say a prebiotic, right? What is a prebiotic? So prebiotics are essentially, they act as your gut fertilizer, right? Because there are certain non-digestible carbohydrates, fiber, that nourishes healthy microorganisms, which are your probiotics. If you're going to populate your gut with a variety of healthy microbes, you need a variety of fibers and prebiotics in your diet. I'm gonna go back, go, on to the next slide, talk a little bit of about prebiotics and then come back and talk more about what are probiotics, what are postbiotics. So let's, let's concentrate right now. Let's put our focus on prebiotics, right? So it's, it's an established science that, it, that the characteristic of a healthy gut environment is the variety or the diversity of your microbes, right? Now, environment, uh, your environment, your genetics, and some of the other factors have influence on your microbiome, but your diet is what determines what grows best and what microorganisms win the battle for space and resources. So we know there is good bacteria, and then we know that there is bad ba bacteria, right? So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna kind of feed ourselves the right amount of prebiotic fiber, right, which feeds your microbiome. Uh, so what are the different what are the different kinds of prebiotics what are the different so we we are trying to feed a bio, a variety of fiber to our body right so there here's a list of all the prebiotics that you can get from food 
But what happens on an everyday basis? Um, are we eating right? That's a big question, right? Are we eating enough of the right food? That's another question. So we not only are focusing on eating the right amount of good food, the right amount of fiber, but we can also incorporate uh, fiber G from USANA, which is formulated with fruit fibers to nourish your cells with phytonutrients and antioxidants. You can add it to your shake, you can add it to your um, food on, on an everyday basis to increase the quantity of fiber, right? And Dr. Karen, um, I would encourage you to uh, chip in if you need to um, talk, add in a little bit. Uh, Janet, you can chip in too. Mm -hmm. I would love to um, give this presentation um, its best from the best yeah. sources. <laughs> well, one thing I would say about your 5G Active, the nice thing is it has this variety, as you said, of, of fibers. And when you have different kinds of fibers, it's like, the microbiome getting different varieties of food, which helps the microbiome flourish. So that's the power of the, the Fiber G Active, that you're getting a lot of different fibers in one product, easy yeah. to take. And most people don't get enough fiber. Right, right. That's that's the key. That's the key. So we if you are if you are, you know, making get making it easy on us, it's easier for us to have the right the right amount of fiber in our body and having the right source of fiber. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. So let's go back. Let's go back and talk about what are probiotics, right? Uh, probiotics, certain types of bacteria that help support your health and are safe in the proper balance. They are called probiotics, also meaning for life. Let me take you to the next slide. And and I think this is this is where probiotics can actually help change bacteria's bad reputation, mm -hmm. right? We always think of bacteria as something which is not good for us, right? Bacteria is supposed to be bad. Do we need to get get rid of it, right? So we want to talk about how acquiring probiotics from your diet is a matter of choosing and incorporating certain foods into your meals. You can find them in fermented dairy foods like yogurt. Uh, buttermilk, kefir, and some types of cheeses. Uh, fermented soy products like tempeh, miso are excellent sources. Um, if you are game for adding kimchi and pickles and sauerkraut, uh, we talked about, um, about these different vegetables, the fermented vegetables, which end up sometimes if you buy the store-bought vegetables, they have um, the um, I'm forgetting the name, the fermenting part of it. We don't want, um, I'm losing the word, Dr. Karen. The, when we the, add the store-bought kimchi, pickles? Or we have added vinegar, sorry. Yes. Vinegar. Oh, vinegar, uh -huh. right. Pickles. So you want to be yeah. careful about how is the product actually fermented, right? Mm -hmm. So another popular trend is making or drinking kombucha which is made for fermenting a mixture of tea, yeast, and sugars. So those are another, uh, these are all the different ways that we can add probiotics to I our- I would add, I think it's so important to talk about yogurt because yes. so many people think, oh, I just eat yogurt. So that's right. plenty. However, we, all, we know not all yogurts are the same. And right. the food industry is such that, that they've exploded the- the yogurts on the shelf and guess what they have is sugar these loaded are kind of with sugar loaded, loaded with sugar yes. so people think they're doing the right thing but they just have this yogurt but we are not talking about that kind of yogurt in fact sugar then destroys the good bacteria because it it puts the bad bacteria love to eat sugar so you got to be really careful of the purity of your yogurt and um, I love coconut yogurt. I think that's... Uh, oh, that's excellent, yes. That's a good one. That's a good one. But just be careful of these ones that have added strawberries and pineapple. and Well, mm -hmm. some of them have yogurt on the side and then all of this sugary sweet and stuff on the other that you're meant to mix together. And that's not what we're talking about. Right, right. And even, even the actual um, making of the yogurt, they have so many additives 
in just mm -hmm. you know the the end product is yogurt but if you look at the read the nutrition label they have like 10 different items trying to create a yogurt so we got to be yes. careful there too so usana oh let me see where where is our probiotic okay there we go uh, I think it was in that previous slide, the little, the slide. little picture. Yes. Yeah, there, there it is. is. Oh, there it is. Oh, you know, I had like the picture of all of you on the side of the probiotic. And I'm saying, where <laughs> probiotic you go? So USANA has another um, oral probiotic. It's very, it's in a sachet and you can just open it up and put it right in your mouth. It contains 12 billion colony forming bacteria per serving and it incorporates both live and active cultures. Um, Dr. Karen, would you like to pitch in? Because there's a lot of debate about when and how should we be even taking um, our probiotics? Mix it? Oh, into it's our a pretty, it's a pretty standard um, practice that you never take a probiotic on an empty stomach. I'm always telling people that because the probiotic has to populate the large intestine and early on an empty stomach, early in the morning, our stomach is very acidic and that's just going to destroy the, the probiotic before it gets to the large intestine. So take it with food. I usually say take it with your breakfast so then you know you've taken it because I really think this right. is kind of like those one a day essentials, adding no matter what, all these foods are also great, but our bodies, where we live in this environment that we live in now, we really need to give our microbiome extra support. So this particular probiotic, easy to take, doesn't have to be refrigerated. And also it has the two main strains that have been most studied. So this is a very good basic daily uh, probiotic, uh, easy to travel with too, which I really appreciate. Um, easy to take, easy to travel. I remember the days when most probiotics you had to refrigerate. And right. I mean- what they did, they just stayed in my refrigerator. I never would remember to pull them out. So I love that this is stable at room temperature and it has a good long shelf life too. So right. highly recommend this. And uh, for little ones, if you, um, you can give them, there is a half a dose or even little babies sometimes uh, that have colic, you can put a little bit on your little finger and get them to lick it and, this is not medical advice and it's not uh, certainly written anywhere, but I've uh, had known people that have done that. Right. So and yes, stability and yeah, go ahead, Janet. I was going to say you did um, kimchi right. one free Friday. Yes. Mm -hmm. And from what I gathered other information from elsewhere, I'm under the, I was learned that, even a just one tablespoon of right. kimchi carries billions of probiotics. Yes, yes, I know. So people think that, oh my God, how are we going to include this into our daily habits? But it's literally, like you said, one tablespoon. So it's you just add in into your tacos or just on your salad on the side, or just as simple, even if you're having a sandwich, you know, if you're having guacamole, just put it on the side. So just a little quantity giving you so many more benefits. And like, I, I forgot the word vinegar, but the, when I did the cooking demo, that's a, it, it's actually massaging the all the ingredients together and then storing them in a dark glass jar for it to be able to ferment it nicely and to get the good bacteria, to get the actual benefit. So yes, stability and viability are so important when it comes to buying uh, the right kind of uh, probiotic. All right, so let's, let me go back to one more thing. Okay, so now, now let's go back and talk about a little bit about what is what is a postbiotic, right? Now, these types of bacteria are no longer alive, but they provide the desired benefit. A postbiotic delivers the functional components from a probiotic bacteria cell, allowing you to get the many of the same benefits of a live strain in a product that otherwise could not contain a probiotic. And um, with USANA, I'm so glad that they have now incorporated 
so many different kinds of postbiotic, not only for your oral microbiome, uh, oral health, but also for your skin. So let me take you down there. We'll come back to the gut brain skin axis, but now because I was already at the postbiotic, um, we talk about we talk about our mouth, right? Mouth is one of your body's most complex places. I think that is because partly because that's like the gateway, right? Gateway to your digestive tract, uh, digestive tract. And would you like to guess how many kinds of different bacteria live in your mouth? Are they going to be millions? I can't even name them. There's so many bacteria, right? But all we are trying to do is we're going to let we're going to support our oral, our mouth to um, kind of fight off the bad bacteria and have the good bacteria in place. So uh, there are some there are some simple ways where how you can keep your oral microbiome in a good shape, right? Um, very simply maintaining the necessary necessary level of oral hygiene, right? As simple as it can get, brushing. Um, with Ayurveda, we also talk about how you want to clean your tongue be early in the morning before even you take a sip of water, right? And your daily flossing, that is just to keep the bacteria at bay. The other very important thing is your lifestyle and your diet. How is that going to impact your bacteria in your mouth? Um, I wanted to just highlight sugar, right? Uh, we kind of talk about sugar uh, to kids. Oh, it's going to destroy your teeth. You know, don't eat so much sugar. But is sugar is a big source of food for oral bacteria. So that feeds into all the bad bacteria. What other thing? Stress. So sugar and stress. Those are all what feeds your bad bacteria. And um, thankfully, USANA has two awesome products, right? Um, oral, pro oral probiotics can help add more beneficial bacteria to the microbiome, right? So we have we have um, we have our oral um, we not only have a toothpaste which uses features the ADP one. Uh, which which attracts which which kind of like um, many ways in many ways um, plays a role in promoting overall health. So it kinds of kinds of helps you not to have the bad bacteria go down your intestinal tracts. Right, it's like a gatekeeper and the first line of defense when it comes to microbes making way into your body. So that's why we want to use the right kind of toothpaste right? There is a delicate balance of bacteria in your mouth, which has been overlooked, right? It, it is the key to maintaining healthy teeth, healthy gums. And what the oral probiotic does, it helps you to support your oral microbiome. And what does the AD, ADP1 in your toothpaste does, right? What it does is that the, so prebiotics, which are the fibers that help feed the bacteria, and now the probiotic bacteria do not need to be alive, right, to provide the desired benefit. And this is what is incorporated into our toothpaste. So they are isolated compounds, and they deliver the same, the same functional component that would, that would be in a live, live prebiotic. Um, the ADP1 is stable and delivers the benefits of the probiotic, helping the whitening toothpaste provide an exceptional clean that can help maintain your good oral health. And how does how does your um, uh, your um, uh, micro microflora replenish in your mouth? You could you could use the you could use a little tablet. Dr. Karen, would you like to add a, how does that benefit overall? Yeah, I, I love those tablets. Like you just pop by in your mouth just as you go to bed and they dissolve in your mouth. And imagine it's the simplicity of that and helping balance your microbiome just by taking one little tablet last thing you have at night. And it also helps with fresh breath. A lot of people have really commented on 
how you wake up with very fresh breath because you imagine all these microbes that you talked about we have in our mouth that are part of why you get that bad breath in the morning. So, and our oral microbiome is linked to everything else you're talking about. They're not separate. So when we can improve the health of our oral microbiome, we're helping our heart, we're helping our gut, we're helping every part of our body. And I think this is one of the most under talked about areas, the oral microbiome and something that is so simple to be able to do something about. Right. And another functional medicine piece that I, I have read and, you know, read some research is we can do a lot to destroy our own oral healthy bacteria by drinking alcohol, using alcohol-based mouthwashes, mm -hmm. a lot of the over-the-counter uh, toothpaste products um, right. are not good to support our oral microbiome. So it's nice that these are a part of lifestyle, literally lifestyle, um, because in the medical world too, if you drink too much alcohol, it's gonna destroy your bees. And we need those vitamin Bs to also support. So all these cellular pathways, like Karen, Dr. Karen said, come hand in hand and and a lot of times it does, Ankata, like you referred to, starts in the mouth. Right. Oh, that reminded me, Janet, about the toothpaste being fluoride free and how fluoride has a uh, impact on your thyroid. So just simple, simple things, but we forget that how our microbiome can be supported with using clean products. I was so to free. tell you, I have to tell you this story. I was so excited. My husband went to his PCP for his annual and he came home and uh, said that it was recommended he have fluoride free toothpaste. And I'm oh. like, what? The regular <laughs> medical establishment has finally caught on to this thing. <laughs> oh, no. I was so excited. I said, oh, I've got one for you. Don't go to the store. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's that's nice. So I think I think they're they're putting it together, the all the science and all the literature now, which is out there about fluoride and impacts on its th uh, on our thyroid hormone. Yeah, and just many other areas right. of, of our body. And also as you were talking about oral microbiome, we've known forever how heart disease is linked to inflammation and periodontitis. So mm -hmm. what is periodontitis? Anything with itis is inflammation. So inflammation of the mouth. And what causes inflammation of the mouth? An imbalanced microbiome. So that's a direct link between our oral microbiome and heart health. Yet um, that's yeah. not, I don't think the medical establishment is quite caught on to that piece yet but yeah. here we are talking about it and giving people this this heads up that there's things you can do about it ahead of time right right wow so so it's not just having fresh fresh breath and no. sparkling <laughs> clean teeth now we are talking about heart health we are talking mm -hmm. about uh hormones so it's it's yes. a big big playing I love that picture. Is it like a little oh. teddy bear there that's behind the little, is that a teddy bear? It's, it's a little was with. <laughs> that's cute. <Yeah. laughs> and sometimes and I, I forget, you know, that just put it right by your bed and pop right. it in your mouth just before you go to sleep. Actually, yeah. you know, I, that, that is so true, Dr. Karen, because I use I had it, I have these tablets for my husband actually for, um, on, you know, right by the toothpaste and, and we never, we never remembered to take them. Mm -hmm. So when I saw this picture, I was like, okay, this is a bedside routine yes. and mm -hmm. this is, this is where it belongs. Not, not on the sink. So. Yes. <laughs> so I, once you get in bed, you don't want to get out again. So no. right there. <laughs> and right, right there. there. Yes. And the recommendation is for you to chew on them before you go to bed and then you, you don't eat anything after that. So. Right. Or just leave it in your mouth and let it dissolve. Oh, let it dissolve. Fine. Right. Yeah. Right. All right. So from there, we can go back to the gut brain axis. Right. This is this is big. All of us um, have now come to talk about come to we, we read articles about how our gut is is connected with our brain, right? Even though we know that 
um, it's it's the master of the, the brain is known to be the master of the body, but um, it's the super highway of, of, of the central nervous system, right? But in recent years, now we know that brain doesn't act as independently as it was believed to be, okay? So there, there is a good, the axis, the gut brain axis is what we are going to focus here on. And when we focus on the gut brain axis, we also want to talk about how are we going to support our gut, right? How are we going to support our gut microbiome here? When, when we think about our gut, the first thing that comes into our mind is digestion, right? We talk about, and then when you think about digestion, we think about the vagus nerve, right? Now, vagus nerve that starts in the brainstem and runs down all the way down into your large intestine, right? Vagus nerve is responsible for regulating a number of number of internal functions, right? My digestion, your respiratory rate, your heart rate, your blood pressure, um, some of your some of your immune re responses, right? Uh, your internal re uh, reflexes, um, sneezing, your swallowing, right? All of that is dependent on your vagus nerve. So, and we also know that research has shown that gut isn't just a site of digestion and nutrient absorption, right? It's also a mediator between its microbiome and the brain, right? Um, it, uh, now, as the site of the food digestion, the gut has immediate knowledge of what is being consumed, right? It gathers all the information of all the nutritional value or all the energy content that you've just had, right? And the vagus nerves make sure that the brain stays up to date on this sensory information. So things like hunger cues, feeling of fullness, that's all your vagus nerves. So now we see that, oh, you know, it's all connected here. And how are we going to, how are we going to support our digestion, right? So one of the, one of the big products that I rely on and my, and especially my parents rely on is the digestive enzyme, right? How does the digestive enzyme, it actually breaks down the food that you've had so that your body is better enabled to absorb all the nutrients from it, right? Um, the other product that would love would love to be on in your belly is your booster C, which is your immune system support, right? With the flu season coming in, we know that we want your extra support with zinc, elderberry, right? And pitching and Janet and Dr. Karen, if you have more to talk about how how we can support our gut brain axis. Well, the digestive enzyme you spoke about, I think some people don't realize how that works. And the, the mm. simple way is in the stomach is your food is coming through. Your stomach has hydrochloric acid and and enzymes to help break down the food. But again, because of our lifestyle, a lot of that is depleted. So by giving your body this little digestive enzyme tablet that has digestive enzymes to to help break down carbohydrates, fats, and protein. Once you have food broken down into its smallest pieces, absorption right. can improve, so nutrients can improve. And whenever you're improving nutrients in the body, every part of your body improves. And if you've heard of the thing called leaky gut, yes. uh, leaky gut that, that happens right after the stomach and, and it's part of the small intestine, once nutrients are really broken down into its smallest form, that really helps that barrier called leaky gut that is where good absorption takes place. So I cannot encourage people enough to, to have these digestive enzymes, carry them with you. If you have a heavy meal or a spicy meal, just pop a few, help your body digest that food, give your, give that body a better chance and uh, just carry them with you. Um, I have them in, on my purse and I have right. them downstairs in, in our kitchen and just make it a habit of supporting your digestion like that. And especially, I think, in the world that we live in, where acid reflux medication is is in everybody's purse yeah. now. So we rather want to have a digestive enzyme instead of putting in a lot of NSAIDs in our body. 
which have so many more repercussions. So, well, of course, we got to tell people that that's not our job to to say yes. to, to tell them not to take those, but. Right. But it does deplete the body's acid, the stomach acid, which is how they work, right? So that can impact digestion. So this is a great support for people like that. Right. And then we always talk about it in functional medicine and Ayurveda. You're not just what you eat, but what you break down and digest as well. Yes. So, yes. yes. We want and that's eat. why they will tell you um, that if you're going to, if you have that little craving for a right. snack or something in the evening, a little papaya or oh. mango, just a little, helps the digestion along. That's true. That's true. You know, I've often heard, Janet, that cravings are really these little bugs inside of us, this imbalanced microbiome wanting to be fed. And so I love that idea is feed them good, nourishing food like that. And of course, digestive enzymes. People don't realize pineapple and papaya, great for digestion. And ginger, ginger is right. another one. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, so I guess we all agree that uh, to keep our gut and our brain, both of them healthy, is to maintain a quality communication between both along the gut brain axis, right? And the easiest way to do this is through food and nutrition. And we we usually we at least have three big opportunities through the day with our three meals. We have the opportunity to keep our gut brain axis healthy and flourishing, right? And some of the other some of the things that we talked about already in summary would be that we want to we want to eat healthy, right? So we are incorporating um, good fats like olive oil and avocados and good amount of fiber intake, right? Fiber rich vegetables and um, also incorporating some additional fiber from outsourcing, like from fiber G to kind of have the right amount, right? Have the right kind of the complex starches um, and, uh, and the fiber rich foods also act like prebiotics, feeding your microbiome, right? Then we also want to consider adding up probiotics to our gut, to our gut, gut. Um, we talked about yogurt, right? Keeping your gut healthy will feel like a sweet treat when we are incorporating good, good food, like Janet mentioned, mangoes and pineapples with a good quality yogurt, right? Um, we can do fermented foods. We are, we're going to do probiotic supplements to add the beneficial bacteria to the gut bacteria, right? All right. So, oh, so now we now now that we've talked about our oral gut bio microbiome, we've talked about our gut brain axis. Let's talk about the gut skin axis. And why do I want to talk about the gut skin axis? Because skin is our largest organ, right? Uh, when we actually put food in our mouth, we actually have we have certain we have our liver, right? being the police in there, kind of like, you know, taking the bad, uh, you know, kind of like having a way for you to strain the bad from the good. But what happens when you put something on your skin? In less than 20 minutes, it's in your bloodstream. So we want to talk about how skin also has, has a big impact. We all want glowing skin. We want wrinkle-free skin right? But how are we supporting it? Are we using the right, the right products, right? Are we doing the right thing to make our skin flora um, not only, not only play, you know, playing a vital role in our immune system, not just skin appearance, how we look, how we feel, but also actually supporting our immune system. And one of my, well, Yusana has such beautiful skincare products, which I use all, uh, but my latest favorite, and that because we are talking about postbiotics, I wanted to talk a little bit about the new barrier balm, right? And how does it work? It's a postbiotic. It has a natural byproduct of probiotic fermentation. So you can you have to be careful on what you lather your skin on, right? And um, what else can we talk about um, with skin? Not only just giving the right kind of hydration, 
right? We want to we want to make sure that we are we are hydrating our body, our insides, for our skin to naturally have the glow. But we are going to be gentle to our skin by using the right products. Right? We're taking the right supplements to support our skin microbiome. Um, I, I also like this. It's one of my favorites right yeah. now. And I like how they call it a postbiotic barrier balm. So it's a barrier because it's a barrier for our skin to what's outside that could affect our skin. But it's also a barrier to what's inside to protect our skin. So, And it's super hydrating super right. hydrating which you put it i put it on i often it feels like a second skin yeah just that feeling as soon as you put it on it's just amazing and yeah. your skin does have kind of a glow because when you're hydrated um both inside and on your skin that because you know drinking lots of water is really important yeah. but it's a uh, it's a fabulous product i agree i i started using this and it's almost it just, it feels so moist and soft. And actually it's, I find that, you know, some cosmetic companies and things sell um, what are called primers. Mm -hmm. um, I'm telling you, this gives you such a smooth surface. And for any of those who like to use foundation, mm -hmm. foundation goes over it like a champ oh right I never thought it's, of that. you're right I was, Jen. It's I was like quite a amazed yeah. Hmm. yeah yes so yes so we just so in conclusion I would just like to remind that your microbiome is a complex system that's ready to help you live the best of your life right and it does so largely through your digestive process um, but also by relaying important messages to your brain to maintain a happy gut and have the perfect uh, communication along the gut-brain axis flowing. Both of these together, this powerful pair helps support your overall health. So eating right, uh, being able to digest, being able to live a stress-free life, and also keeping up with the different products that we have in the market is very, very vital. I can yeah, I think that's so true. We're not saying everything is food first. So we're not saying that all these products we're talking about, like fiber G active and the, the prebiotic, postbiotic, probiotic, these don't replace food. Mm -hmm. But basically because of the environment again that we live in we need that extra support and convenience let's face it it's the convenience so um i suggest people just take a get take a little nugget from this because you covered a lot that's a lot and a lot of science and but just start somewhere just take a, a baby step even if it's that little postbiotic tablet next to your bedside table that you pop every night that's going to so good for you yes so thank you Ankita that was fabulous and no, thank you uh, really loaded with great uh, information and we just recommend that you everyone reach out to their health coach because oh, well pro is uh we we're all health coaches that can help you make that decision to take that first step thank you Ankita thank that was, you that was wonderful. thank you now, thank you for all the support. I needed all the support, all the chit-chatting between the presentation. <laughs> <laughs>